Hello everyone, welcome to today's Knowledge Webinar from CAD to 3D Visuals in 60 Minutes. Design in a building with ArcLine XP. Meet ArcLine XP, the design software targeted for architectural projects. Learn how to import your existing CAD drawings, draw multi-story buildings, generate section and elevate and elevations from your model and create immersive visuals. We're very excited. Today's webinar presenter are Ilesh Pap, who is an architect, CG, and CAT specialist, supporting and tutoring architects and interior designers, and Zoltan Toth, sales and marketing specialist. Let me tell you a little bit about Novag. This is a page where you can find our Clinic XP on our catalog. Novag is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices more freedom, best advice, faster service, and no headaches. Check us out at NoVeg.com. And I want to um, let you know that I'll be recording this session. So you can watch it over and over again on our YouTube and Vimeo channels. Just search for NoVeg. And now, without further ado, I'm going to share Zoltan's screen, and they will guide you through this new and exciting product. Designing a building from the very first lines all the way to the rendered images in 60 minutes. That's what we are going to look at today. Yep. My name is Zoltan Tod. Over here is our resident architect, Mr. Ideshwap. Hi there. There's a lot to discuss, so let's get it going. For those of you who have never met us before, we are representing a company called Archline, and Archline actually stands for a family of products uh, targeted for any kind of design specialist. We are catering uh, for professionals such as architects, interior designers, furniture makers, or basically anybody who needs to have a rendered image of a location like this one. Yep. Uh, just in a bit of a few words about uh, who we are and what kind of products we are dealing with, we actually have three products we are going to briefly discuss today. Archon XP LT is a very affordable, small version of our main software products, and that is designed to be able to work in 3D, and that is targeted for smaller offices. If you're looking for something more, something more comprehensive, or maybe you are working in a BIM environment, we recommend that you take a look at Archon XP Professional, which is a complete all-out BIM uh, tool set, and that is targeted for larger projects, such as the one that we are going to look at today. And lastly, we have Archon XP Live, which is the architectural visualization software targeted to make stunning rendered images. Just to give you an idea of what kind of projects uh, we are catering for, just a few example renders uh, made by third-party renderers, but this gives you an idea in terms of what kind of projects are realized with Archon, both interior design and architectural projects. And now what we have here is what we are going to build up. But interestingly, we are going to do it from the first lines. Yeah. And I think the first step what we are doing is to, to convert a line drawing into, into a three-dimensional model. That's, that's the most uh, widespread or the most common uh, workflow. But speaking of these things, uh, how do we get information into our Shine XP? Yeah, what we have here is a, is a, is a complete BIM model already mm -hmm. um, with all the walls and the roof and the railings and everything else, even the surrounding. Uh, we will uh, show you how to, how to get those objects, how to uh, pre mm -hmm. prepare those walls. Um, should they be like multi-layered multi walls or uh, like conceptual uh, drawing uh, systems. Um, and then we will go and uh, progress into something more complicated, like a multi-story mm -hmm. building. We will create all the sections, all the elevations. And finally, we will create all the, all the um, extracted data, like mm -hmm. uh, we will create a schedule, we will uh, add um, uh, um, a plot lamp, a, a plot uh, layout uh, at the end, and we will publish it into a PDF. And at the very end, we will also create uh, visuals, uh, literally in seconds, using the live solution. Mm -hmm. And we will show you how to create uh, animated uh, videos out of the model that you have. So this is what we are trying to achieve today. And how do we, how do we get started? <coughs> and what is the first step of our workflow? And the first step can be 
many things from scratch to have an IFC file or DWG file. And because uh, DWG file is still a very, very popular and a common file format that uh, architects used to uh, communicate with, today we will focus on the mm -hmm. uh, DWG input. But as you can see on screen, ArchLine is very, very communicative. It is designed to be as as much as compute communicative as it can be with the uh, with the uh, other uh, design systems mm -hmm. or modelers or renderers or third-party solutions. What you can see at the top of the screen is mostly for the architects, the IFC, the uh, AutoCAD ecosystem uh, co communication uh, formats and the Revit uh, and the green building uh, systems. And then you have all the popular 3D modeler formats like the uh, SKP, the 3DS, the OBJ, those are for, for, the, for the 3D models when, when you communicate with a, with a, a visual designer uh, designing the model themselves. And then you can extract this data into third-party renderers, for example, like Atlantis, which is a popular solution, uh, Indigo, Thea, Cinema 4D. And also at the end, of course, you can publish mm -hmm. uh, information into PDF files or Excel files. So th that's the whole circle uh, here around. Just a reminder, what kind of file are we using now? Today, we will work with uh, DWG files. So what I have here, <coughs> sorry, is um, a, a plain white paper. I just loaded up a new project. And then what I will do here, I will just uh, go to the file and import and select any of those file formats mm -hmm. that I would like to import. Uh, if you cannot find something that you would like to import, then you should go with the first option that will uh, list all the possible options uh, from here. And you can select uh, anything that you like. Like, for example, we have this mm -hmm. uh, building uh, floor plan uh, as one single PD, uh, I mean DWG file now. So I will go, just click on open. And then the software, what we see here is it is actually um, recognizing the, 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 the unit system uh, yes. from within the, the, the DWG file. And you don't have to do anything mm -hmm. with that. But if you want, you can, of course, uh, rescale it or uh, change the unit system. Now, what we have here, we have a, this nice little ruler here. I think which it is, should be about 15 feet. So yes, <coughs> that's, that's a good comparison. So I think when I just zoom in enough and like we can see like that this, this 10 feet long line and I just align it next mm -hmm. to the original uh, ruler, it, it tells me that, yeah, this is this is okay. So I will just click OK. And then the software imports this uh, drawing into a new uh, empty white paper. Now, this is without the 3D. Now, mm -hmm. you can get uh, DWG files with 3D content as well, but that is not a BIM uh, model. In a, in a BIM model, when you see a wall, it is rep represented in 2D and in 3D at the same time. It's not, a, not two separate things. So when you would import a DWG file that is not containing walls, it is containing drawings. So now we need to convert it into uh, something. Uh, and how does, that, how does that happen? So I will just uh, go and uh, use the wall tools here. As you can see, the ribbon has uh, several different pages. I will just use the building now. And I go to uh, wall, and there is one dedicated tool for that. This is the walls and DWG drawing uh, option. And then I just go ahead and, and I just try to pick the one on the, and the other end point of this uh, mm -hmm. wall and then the thickness by clicking here. And then the software converts this into a wall. And what you can see here is a 3D model of this, uh, oh, yes. of this wall. So we will focus on this uh, from now on. And I will just keep going and uh, mm -hmm. just like tracking this, this information, tracing this information so the using the same method all over. Just like you mentioned, is that just <coughs> pick a point close to the ending points of the walls and pick the opposite face. Now, <coughs> the, the big advantage of this workflow is that you don't really have to care about the thickness of the wall because yeah. it's going to be calculated as you go on. You notice that the wall connections are not always solved automatically, although the software tries its best to do it, but if you <coughs> want to have a manual control over that, you can do the LT and L connections uh, by yourself. I will so show what, that in a moment. What Ilesh yeah. is doing is that he's going, uh, going in a circle and now he's going to turn a thinner partition wall into a 3D model, but again, he doesn't have to know <coughs> or add the, the wall thickness, he's yeah. just going to click on the ending points, opposite face, and the wall is going to be up. So after that, we are going to solve the connections, which I think in most cases that's pretty fine. Uh, yeah, it's but just having a, uh, a few 
places where you need to use this this connection yeah. that you just mentioned it is at the top of the screen you can either choose t connection or the l connection and when you select one or the other wall then the software automatically connects mm -hmm. that uh, just as you told, in some cases it happens automatically, uh, but when I clicked uh, someplace where it was not long enough, it is not connecting that, mm -hmm. that uh, automatically, but you can solve it manually at any time. So walls are actually extended or trimmed back, depending on what you actually need. <coughs> yeah. And if you, are, if you are preferring to work in 2D, you can do this actually in 2D or in 3D, and that actually <laughs> applies to most actions in Arch9. You can do things in the 2D view or in the 3D view, whichever is more comfortable. Yes, right? sometimes uh, it is uh, simpler to, to, to solve so, uh, situations in the 2D drawing, such as this uh, case, for example, when I have this DWG drawing and I would like to trace all the doors in, as mm -hmm. well. So in that case, I go to the uh, door libraries and I can either select a door, <coughs> going to any of those, selecting the shape, the type that I would like to apply uh, inside or outside, or I can just go and use this door, uh, door by two points, yes. which uh, goes with the default door. I only need to uh, determine whether this is this door is in a partition wall or, or mm. in a in a structural wall, and then I just pick the two points. I don't even yes. have to know the the, the real uh, width, and then the software traces that, and I, then now I have a door here, and that, let's just repeat that here. So there <coughs> so is I no need for one. manual um, refreshment of the 3D <coughs> model that is that right. going to build up automatically by itself. <laughs> uh, but you know, once you have added the, the windows, uh, because that's another topic, uh, there's going to be another important thing we have to cover. But first, let's talk about the windows. How do we add them? Yes, um, that's actually the same thing. You can either go to the libraries. Uh, you can even design these doors and windows for you if you if you can't find the, the, the perfect match uh, from the libraries. Uh, but now we'll, we'll just go with the window by two points uh, yes. option. And I will just pick uh, two any sort of two points on this drawing. And then again, the, the, the whole point here is that I don't have to continuously keep uh, that in mind what is the width and the height and, and everything else for these uh, windows. I will just quickly trace them and then later mm -hmm. uh, I will make all the changes that are necessary like the type and, uh, and the sill height and everything else. So my goal now is to uh, trace this drawing as quick as possible and then turn it into something that we can consider as a building and then we can work with that as a building. What's the deal with the slab? because we don't have a floor here, so how do we add one? Yes, uh, that is, uh, in this case, it is actually the same contour as what we have as a contour of the building itself. So for that solution, which is a very common uh, situation, we have a slab by walls tool when you can just simply select all the walls uh, that are uh, making up the building contour and then you just hit enter and the software uh, creates that slab with the default settings which you can change the material and the, and the uh, side material as well. And in other situations, like for example in case of a terrace, <coughs> which is in our, in our uh, situation, it's, it's here in our case, I will just uh, go with the slab in sketch mode, which allows me to kind of literally draw uh, the contour of this uh, this uh, yes, slab I think outside. The, the most important thing here is that <laughs> if you already know CAD, if you have already used any kind of CAD system before, you are going to use very sim similar uh, tools here as well because you are going to sketch polylines, um, offset the la the nodes, add new nodes, delete the old ones, curve the, ed curve <laughs> the edges, fill yeah. them if you need. So. How do you make a copy of this? Yeah, the same way you can make a copy as in, in any sort of Windows program, you just uh, select the content that you would like to make a copy of, and then you just uh, hit Control C on the keyboard. Uh, in this case, you need to pick up uh, mm -hmm. a, a point, which you use to uh, paste it with, and then just paste it. Control V and just paste it over there. And, and when you need it, you need to, uh, you can of course customize this. So I just used an offset on the edges. When mm -hmm. you select something, we call these markers. Uh, when you click on a marker, you will have an action like changing the size, uh, adding a new breakpoint or anything else. All those items and, that you create with the software are very, very flexible. So you can just uh, keep changing them the way you want and flexibly redesign mm -hmm. them. What about the walls? Because <coughs> so far we have been using a one layer conceptual wall, but that's we right. see on the DWG that that's not the case. We have a three or even four layer yeah, wall. So how do, we, yeah. how do we use that? How do we make that? Well, we already know the values of these uh, wall layers, uh, so we won't measure them. Later we will show you how to measure an item. Uh, but in, in a situation you would measure what is the original layer system, and then you can at any time build that layer system into the wall settings. Then you select the wall, you edit the properties of yes. this wall, and you go to the compound settings, I mean the compound la layers of this uh, wall, and you can just keep adding all the necessary 
uh, layers uh, into this wall. In this case, it's four separate layers. And we, we know the values in millimeters, but, but now we are working in, in English uh, feet and inches. So you will see that Archline XP itself is actually automatically coming with a built-in um, unit, uh, mm -hmm. unit converter. I will show you the setting uh, for the units uh, later on. Uh, but first, what I will do, I will just quickly uh, set which will be the core layer. In this case, it will be the, the one uh, at, the, at the bottom. This will be the... the the, co the core layer from mm -hmm. um, uh, built of brick. There will be two uh, insulation uh, layers. Uh, so it's an insulation. I'm just looking for a material inside the Archline XP's libraries, which you can freely extend and, and bring in any sort of texture and uh, do whatever you want with that library. Okay. Also, you can change the, the existing ones. And then now let's go, let's focus on the thicknesses. So now I know that the, the thickness is in millimeters, but as you can see, when I type uh, the original value in millimeters, and, and I'm working in this sort of uh, setting, the software is converting it, in, it into feet, feet and inches. Yes. I will show you how, to, how you can refine this setting. Because for, for this design, we actually need that uh, refinement. I will use uh, the following value is, is this. Uh, there is another one uh, which is, uh, is 80 millimeters. Sorry, it is uh, 80 millimeters. I, I should not forget to type yes millimeters. because otherwise it's going to be a yeah otherwise it will be feet. something else yeah i think it's coming right. together nicely so. yeah as you can see at the at the right uh, bottom corner it is having a nice little preview there telling us uh, whether it's fine or something and it's millimeters yeah i think the so last it's thing uh, missing is the hatch pattern because now all the four layers <coughs> have the same pattern yes. but how do we turn that into something else? yes the hatch pattern will be uh, something that i like to use for thermal insulation. Mm -hmm. I will just use this pattern. You can choose whatever you want. And even the software is coming with built-in styles. We will show you that. Uh, so you don't even have to always continuously be uh, starting from scratch. You can use multi-layered uh, presets as well. I'm just showing how to create something like that. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. Uh, everything is, is, is cool. I just forgot to set up that this is actually the core layer. Okay. So yeah, everything is fine. Uh, I just hit OK, and here at the bottom of the screen, you can see a layer, uh, I mean, sorry, a style list, which yes. is uh, wherever you go uh, in Archline, you will find styles for the roofs, for the slabs, for the railings, for the uh, staircases, and so on. These are uh, there for you to save all those settings that you have just created. So if I would like to use this in, in the future, I just click here, and I just say, OK, this is a, a four-layered, um, four-layered uh, wall system, for example. Mm -hmm. System, yeah. So and I can create a folder, subfolder, but I will just go with this and I would like to use it in all my projects. So I just keep this uh, option and I say, okay. So from this point on, this I wall see. actually is a multi-layered wall and I can uh, either uh, change the style of all these walls or I can just click here I will just do do this in the 3D because I can easily select all the rest of the, these walls, and I just use this this very popular option. It's got the copy properties. You can copy all sort of properties just as you would do with a paragraph in in in, in Word, for mm -hmm. example. You copy all these properties all around to the rest of the walls, and then you can just you know uh, have this multi-layered setting. So whether you start with a conceptual drawing or you go with the detailed already, there is always there and back. You can you can just uh, switch from one sort of representation mm -hmm. to the other. Representation, you can you can manually change it at any time uh, to have the, the desired effect. And what about uh, framed wall construction? So how do we how do we add that? Because obviously this is not that that example is not covering that. But yep. can you show us something where we where we see how Arshan is doing uh, framed walls? Yeah, for that we have a complete uh, project mm -hmm. here uh, because the the project that we are working on now is not a framed uh, wall system, uh, but uh, this one here is made of uh, using the same tools with all the same uh, design uh, systems, but with with, with one difference. And that difference is here for the settings of this uh, wall. If I go into mm -hmm. the settings of this wall system, and I see all the same settings, all even even the um, the several uh, layers are, are similarly set up, but there is another setting for the wall framing. So if you go there, you will be able to set up the floor plate, top plate, and whichever mm -hmm. you select, the software tells you where that is and how you can. Uh, you know, set up the settings. You can add, add uh, multiple framings uh, to the same system, and those are also things that you can store into 
a style we call that a style and then you can just uh, you know use it uh, over and over or you can pass it to a colleague if you work together and this is something that you can export and uh, and, and import into uh, Archline versions so Re returning back to the original drawing that we have uh, started working on uh, <coughs> there's, there's one thing what we forgot to mention and that is the um, with the DWG import we haven't talked about the layers yeah uh, an important topic because if you already know some some CAT systems then you are familiar with layers uh, Archline <coughs> XP does support the layer system so for yeah. instance if you want to turn off this drawing that we have imported uh, because for your rest of your work you don't need yeah. it, then you can do that just fine. Yes, whenever you import a DWG file, the software automatically create filters and variations out mm -hmm. of that content that you had. So you can manually switch between there and back between the original DWG drawing and the newly created content using this these layer uh, filters here. Uh, if I if I go with the use layers or only the layers that came with the DWG mm -hmm. file, that was the name of the DWG file, so it, it's easy to find. Yes. I can easily turn them on or off or change their printability, for example. So perhaps I would like to uh, see them, edit them, but I don't want to print them. And in that case, I can set, set that up. So it's pretty much similar to whatever else you used before uh, with all the layer systems. Mm -hmm. This is uh, quite the same thing. Uh, before we go uh, one one story up, because that's what we are aiming at to create a multi-level building, let's talk about how do we add a staircase. Yes, and before we do that, there is one another thing that I wanted to mention because we we, we talked about the slab, we talked about the, yes. the the wall itself, but we didn't talk about their connection. Mm -hmm. And for that, I have another uh, project representing how that works. So now, if I would have created this uh, very very. Uh, conceptual drawing with only one layer uh, I would have something like this this is a simplified extract of a of a building with only a simple uh, um, single layer wall and a single layer slab but if you use multi-layered systems like multi-layered walls and multi-layered uh, slab systems, then the software will automatically create this sort of connection. Mm -hmm. And this comes from the default settings of the software, uh, which you can at any time change to whatever you want. But the, ba but the basic setting is that core layers meet each other and they, they join uh, at the proper place and all the rest of the uh, layers are just on top of that and, con and, and connecting and mm -hmm. colliding with the proper uh, solutions. This sort of uh, setting is actually, in case of a wall, which we already discussed, is in the settings of the wall, whenever you set up the height of the of, of the base of set, for example, or the or the height of the uh, the layer itself, then you can go to the settings, and this is where you can set up where it belongs to, and and uh, what's the constraint of this uh, wall or the wall layer itself, and the same goes with all the other uh, structures mm -hmm. as well. So there's a logical uh, <coughs> correl correlation between the elements. That's right. Yeah. Um, let's return back to the drawing. Uh, First, let's have a staircase yeah. because now we want to go one story, one floor up. Yeah, about the staircases, there there is a pretty pretty large uh, built-in library of the staircases that you can just go there, select, and just uh, customize it. You can uh, customize the ergonomics and uh, whatever look and feel you would like to uh, ergon um, change for, for the. Uh, staircase itself and it's a very good very good thing today we won't use it because we don't have a 2d representation but you can actually use an existing 2d representation representation of a staircase mm -hmm. to build it one by one step by step and turn that into a staircase now we will just go with the simple option when we manually create a staircase starting from here going around uh, and stop stopping here and i also need to change the uh, orientation of this uh, staircase. I can select this one for, for going on the right hand side of the staircase. I can use values if I know the length, mm -hmm. uh, but I just click here now and then now I have a default staircase with the, with the bottom part and the uh, steps at the top, which I can go there and find the settings and customize the way I want. How do I make the staircase reach the second, the the yeah, the second floor? Because now <coughs> it's not reaching there at all. So. Well, the, the the easiest setting is that either either I set up the proper height or I just simply tell the software to take take the floor height and then mm -hmm. it automatic auto aligns the mm -hmm. the staircase to to match the the difference between the two uh, levels. By the way, while we are talking about that, here is the here is the place where you can actually uh, add new floors above or below and set up the height of that floor. Uh, to actually manage a multi-level uh, mm -hmm. building. Now uh, let's load up the next uh, version of this project because there's yep. still a few things to do on this on this level, but we don't really want to uh, care much about yep. that. So we are just going to load up the next stage, and uh, we are <laughs> going to build up a multi-level building with uh, 
with the tools that we have here. Just one second. Until yeah, in the following stage, we actually already uh, have all the walls, all the windows, all the doors uh, made using the same exact uh, method that we just show you using the two points mm -hmm. method and tracing the walls uh, this way. Uh, also, we have created a, a, a tiny surrounding. This is actually a slab. Uh, the software supports a terrain. It has its terrain system itself. You can import terrains, uh, but now we just made it simple by using a simple yes. flat ground around. So now what you see here is that we actually have that nice staircase, uh, all the multi-layered walls uh, created the way we have just uh, did it before. And then now what we need is to make a copy of this uh, to multiply it as many levels we, we want to have. And so do I, do just, I just select the content that I would like to make a copy of. I just go with this, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see it on the 2D and the 3D. It's, it's parallelly highlighted, so it's very easy to trace. Uh, I mean track. And then I just go and use the copy objects to other floor and I can select as many floors as I want. I just would like to copy this to the second floor and I hit OK. And now I have this, this fully copied to the se second level and, and, and then now I customize it the way I want. Mm -hmm. so for example, I don't need this wall here at the, at the top level. And for example, I just would like to customize this. I just click here, I just move this node and flexibly redesign it, keeping the same characteristics, keeping, keeping the same materials, but changing the shape. And also while talking about the slab, uh, now we need to have a, a break through a yes, hole. Yes, because you can't go from one uh, story <clears throat> to the other, so. so yes, yeah, so uh, as you will see, it is supported all around with the tools, but now we will just focus on this uh, tool, which is actually having an automated uh, way to create this hole. You only need to go back to the first floor, uh, with, with these two buttons, I can just switch between the first floor and the second floor. So I just select the, the, the stair at the, at the first floor, and then the stair itself has the ability to cut the slabs above itself. And then now when, when it appear, appears like that, you can mm -hmm. see that now it is something that people could use, that people can walk on. And it is based on the, the, the standard stair settings, which again is something that you can customize mm -hmm. in the settings. Uh, I wanted to show one thing about the settings that you can find here in the software and you can fully customize anything like, for example, the units and angles that I have did, uh, I, I did before are, are here on this page uh, with, uh, with all the other settings like the graphics and, the, and so on. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is where you can customize how the software works. Just one, one question about the, <coughs> the floors. How do you navigate between the floors? Uh, navigating between the between the floors when you are on the two D uh, floor plan um, is by using this here, uh, uh, mm -hmm. going up or below, mm -hmm. and the same thing you can uh, you can use on the keyboard. That's the page up and the page down key. So it's very very simple. Well, interestingly, it's like the pages of a book. You can just yeah. turn the pages and go uh, one way, uh, one story up or down. That's right. Or you can just open up the navigator and just jump to the floor which in which you care. Uh, about what you do. So we are just going to load up the next version when we are looking to get to get a roof done on the on the whole yes. location. Yeah, so um, this is how you can create a multi-story uh, building. Uh, as most of the structure will repeat itself on the mm -hmm. on the following floors. This is I think it's a, one of the fastest yes. ways to do that. And then when you achieve something like this with, 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 with all the rest of the building structure, the rest of the uh, doors and the windows and, and slabs, then uh, you get to the point when you need to create the, uh, the mm -hmm. roof itself. And how do we do that? Now, uh, that is also something in the software that has many, many different options uh, covering uh, all the several different roof shapes and, and, and uh, interesting ways of creating those uh, flat roofs, Dutch gable, jerking head, and, and so on. But now we will go with the simple open gable. So what I will do, I will just go here, uh, pick this uh, corner point. But before I do that, I make sure that I'm working on the proper proper floor because for this purpose, we have actually created a roof floor for mm -hmm. the roof itself. So uh, I will just, uh, as you can see, there is a change here. that We have actually created in this stage, we have created several different levels and we have created one at the top of this system for the roof itself. So uh, what I will do, I will just go here, uh, navigate to the proper floor, which is the roof floor itself. And interestingly, we yes. cannot see anything from the other floors uh, at this point, but we can turn on the visibility of any floor that is uh, having a use for us. And then when I click here, it is appearing in gray. Now with the default setting, we can change that. 
uh, I just go to the roof and I just, instead of using the roof by uh, walls, I will use this open gable, picking up the proper point. In this case, this is the uh, first point. This will be the length of the roof and this uh, the third point defines the width of that. Uh, which is about it's it's about here mm -hmm. on this drawing. There's quite a few lines here, but this is the one. So so now what we have is this. This is uh, something that we can start using with the default settings. I will show you a few few settings. But uh, the, the first interesting thing that sometimes when uh, when you edit the model, uh, the the 3D is kind of uh, becoming outdated. Now in, this is a situation. Only you only need to do. Uh, to update the 3D, you, you only need to click here to, to rebuild the 3D mm -hmm. uh, because now there is, a, there is a situation going on between the walls and the, and the roofs that uh, the software can consider when you update the changes. Yeah. This is happening there because sometimes uh, when, the soft, when, the, when the project is kind of large, if this would happen automatically, you wouldn't be able to work because the, you would have to wait for the software to calculate yes. how those things are, are, are connecting just as, is, just as it did now. So, so it's here. transactional. You can yes. decide when you would mm -hmm. like to do that. Perfect. But I think there are, there are some things on this roof we have to get done, uh, yeah. some, some recesses and holes. That's right. How do we get them? Okay, so uh, before I do that, a few things about the settings, mm -hmm. just, uh, just as I mentioned. The settings uh, are about its position, uh, how it looks like, its, its pitch and shape. This is where you can define the roof mm -hmm. pitch. And also uh, how, it, how it works, uh, how it cuts uh, things, mm -hmm. mostly uh, the walls and of course the general properties. And you can also turn on all the Eve spellings and everything else that you want. There's the, this is also coming with built-in styles that you can uh, go see. with. Okay, so, so now to create the, those uh, for the terrace and everything else, you only need to go, just as in case of the uh, slab and the staircase, you need to use the local menu, the, the context menu of this uh, roof and find the hole option. And then you can just create that hole and trace the contours. Now, this is one of the simplest uh, ways to do that is to kind of, you know, just clicking into the corner points and finding where mm -hmm. this hole will be. And then as we are looking at the same side, you will see that appearing when I hit enter and I close that, it appears automatically. This is also a flexible contour. You can change it at any time. And the same thing you can do on the other side where we actually have um, a building part coming out mm -hmm. uh, because we have those large, nice walls, but they cannot be uh, seen now because the roof actually just, you know, uh, removed that because of this yeah, see, connection these thing. got chopped up so how do we yeah. uh, amend it i mean we could be adding a, a hole as well but i think this is more like a recess this goes yes into the roof yes 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 so. uh, adding a hole works uh, or adding a recess automatically uh, absolutely works and this is the whole same thing that you can apply for a, a slab contour a wall contour well, my sorry i just made a mistake with that uh, so I just click on the edge, use the insert node, and I highlight this corner point, and you see those lines appearing, the green lines, those are the auxiliary uh, lines, and then you can use them uh, for tracing these uh, connections between the uh, points and the counter, mm -hmm. and then you can just click here and use offset to move it, extend it, or make it a recess, and when you're done, and you hit enter, then it is created. And what I need to do again is to update the 3D. Uh, so now I just go here and click on 3D and then the software updates that automatically. You only need to wait a little while mm -hmm. until it calculates the result, but then it's perfect. Speaking of the roof, there are some details we have to get, get done at this stage, and one of them <coughs> is the roof windows. So yeah. how do we draw them? Because how are they actually different from the actual windows? Well, there is a tiny difference, uh, which, is, uh, which is very important for this, that you need to place these into the roof mm -hmm. uh, plane. So for, for that, there is, a, there is a dedicated option here in the window options, which is the roof window. In case of the roof window, you need to select the roof plane itself. Now it's this, I will select the contour of this roof plane. And then I can set up the, the default settings uh, for this uh, roof. So in this case, uh, I will go with a wooden material. I just, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, something like a wood material. Sorry, I just go to the main main library. You can select where you would like to look for these materials. If you're, work, if you're searching in the project, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it will be less. But if you look for the whole uh, ecosystem, uh, you will find more and more uh, materials. I will just go with this one. 
And yeah, uh, and and here I will use the the proper width and the proper yes. height. Uh, the width should be thirty inches. Yeah, it's uh, thirty, and, and the height should be uh, fifty-five. Yeah, That's, sorry, I think uh, yeah, it's, yeah, the it's inches, not. and it's fifty-five, right? Fifty-five. Yes, the software 55. converts it based on what is actually set up. <laughs> so setting, yeah. uh, we had this kind of measurements and dimensions, but it's going to be turned into something else if it if it's needed. Yeah. Uh, how do we position it? This window exactly on the on the brackets that we have. Yes. First things first. The software automatically. Uh, recognizes where it can be positioned mm -hmm. uh, or you can just type a, a, a cell height if you know mm -hmm. that but if you want uh, and it, this is a situation like that you would like to freely position it wherever it falls to uh, because I don't know where the uh, cell height is then I can just use this free option uh, freely placing it here and for example here and then it appears there appear on, the, nice. on the 3D design as well. Another element of the roof is actually the rain gutter so how do we get yep. them done? Yeah, for the gutter, I will just uh, use uh, any of those uh, contours uh, here. And what I will do is uh, I go to the building and mm -hmm. roof and using the gutter. Oh, so it's option. automated again. You don't have yep. to uh, track the path. Just No, no. Uh, well, you can if you want. But uh, if you just click on the bottom uh, line of this mm -hmm. uh, roof, then the software automatically recognizes that shape. Mm -hmm. It offers to select different cross sections to select the material adding a downspout uh, which uh, in our case can be anywhere here on this line or we can just type the, uh, the distance uh, uh, from let's here let's put it um, two feet from from the from the left hand side okay so it's two feet uh, mm -hmm. and then let's just go with that and when i just uh, hit uh, okay i mean just create that and the software adds that uh, here but I can change it uh, at any time. What is the length? Uh, we we uh, depends on which which plane we are talking about. Because if it's if it's the shorter one, then uh, then I mean the length is always the same here in this case because it is at the same uh, position. So it's twenty uh, feet, right? Yeah, I think that's inches. Yeah, sorry, 20 feet. Uh, twenty feet. Yeah. So it's this this is the length, mm -hmm. and then here okay, and then it it appears over there. Mm -hmm. So this is how you can. You can place it. You can you can edit it. You can mm -hmm. copy that all all around. So you can just uh, work with that the same way as you work with all the walls and uh, doors and everything else. So let's place a few railings. Uh, one over here on the on the balcony closer to us, and maybe then we can copy to the next balcony. So mm -hmm. uh, how do we draw them? Yeah, I just uh, switch floors. So I'm I'm at the second floor now, and I will use the railing tool, which you can apply on a um, on a staircase. You can uh, design freely any sort of uh, railing. I will just go with this one, picking up the corner points and saying that, okay, it's it's actually here. Mm -hmm. And I say, I hit enter and then now I have this uh, appearing all around. I can change the height if I want. Yeah, what happens if I want to just change it a, a tiny bit, but I want to do it visually? Well, in that case, you can use this uh, these three axes. It works with all the items mm -hmm. in Archline. And then, you know, you can just move it somewhere where you would like to uh, position it, like, for example, mm -hmm. in th into this situation. And then you can just uh, do the same thing with we, which we did with the terraces. Uh, you can just control copy and then let's just pick up a point and then just paste it over here with its middle point into that uh, location. And then now we have that. It's Perfect. nice. So that's conclu that concludes the mm -hmm. modeling part. And now comes the documentation part, which shouldn't necessarily be boring. Let's see what we have there. So let's load up the, the, the final version yep. of the modeling and, uh, and open up the uh, yeah, that version, and then we can see how do we get some nice dimensions and yep. hopefully some plot layouts as well. Yeah, okay. So what we load now is this uh, final version with all the details that we mentioned before, uh, walls, roof, uh, railings, uh, and so on. But we, we, we need the, the, the information like written text mm -hmm. and room names and, and things like yes, that. Yes. So in that case, we will use this, uh, this uh, option which is I uh, just clear this. Uh, I think before you do anything, I think we have to set up the the geolocation because a oh, lot yeah. of lot of information will be derived from that. So. Yes, that's right. That's right. Also, the uh, the the north direction is very important. Mm -hmm. If you click here, you can freely set up the north direction. Uh, when you look at the drawing, you can see okay now there's north, so you can just easily set it up also by typing the the, the angle. And setting up the geolocation works in a very very uh, easy fashion. You just go to Google Maps. You can actually choose any other uh, options from here, but now I will go to Google Maps. And I think you know the location of this building, so let's just use this search box. Yes, just a second, I'm just going to uh, 
type in the the address. Yep. And yeah, that's the one. And I think that was a that was a vacant lot over here. Yeah. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to move this over here. I can go back to the to the satellite view so I yep. can make sure that yeah, this is the this is the vacant lot yep. we were talking yep. about. So mm -hmm. I think this is fine. We can fine tune this later on. Not needed any further. But one one very important thing is why we set these things up it's because this information is going to appear on the plot layouts and also you can make a shadow analysis and so turn on the yes. shadows and then the shadows will be done <laughs> based on the north location and where you are on the globe so this is this is what happens when you turn on the shading mm -hmm. and when you go to find the sun position uh, also when you go and you, you know you would like to as, just as you mentioned you would like to create a shadow simulation in that case you can uh, set up the proper date and time and all those information derived from the uh, real uh, geolocation are an important data set imp important data set that is necessary to calculate this and the re and the rendered images now if you mm -hmm. would, if you would mind to open the rendered images again to see uh, how they look like uh, from the final version uh, when we will have all the objects, we will talk about the objects a little while later uh, to show how the uh, how, to, how you can populate the building uh, surrounding like this this mm -hmm. here. So this is this is the reason why it looks like this is because of the background and because of the sun setting that we mm -hmm. applied here, which is uh, geo referenced perfectly. Uh, what kind of rendering <laughs> engine did you use for this? Uh, this is the this is the internal rendering engine mm -hmm. of the software. Uh, it is coming from the from a, a, a French uh, maker. Uh, it is a ray tracer. So it would, when you create those images with all the reflections and all the uh, nice material settings, that will look like this. And you can also populate the source surrounding with a little bit more, uh, like cars and people mm -hmm. and, and, and things like that. So those are still images that you can produce right from within the software using the built-in rendering engine. Uh, so this is this is what we have now. Yeah, and we are going to return <laughs> to this topic in a short while. But first, let's talk about the documentation. Uh, all these numbers <laughs> and calculations. How do we get them out from the model? And 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 one another thing before we before we do that is that where you can obtain these oh, yes, things are, are for example the three D warehouse, or you can go to the BIM BIM libraries and download objects. The software is also coming with built in object libraries. Uh, you can go with default cars and so on. But any, at any time, you can go online and find. Uh, real makers uh, stuff that you can download mm -hmm. and, and apply into your model. So, okay, about the documentation. In the documentation, uh, what we would like to add first is perhaps the dimensions. Uh, the, you can find many different settings for the for the dimensions. The one of one of the pop, most popular is this uh, kind of automated way when you can select the style that you would like to apply here. Uh, what you would like to measure with this is this is a list from here. From here, I can add into the execution list here the commands to execute. That means these are all the uh, uh, measure, will be measurements that are placed around when I select the building and I hit enter and I place it somewhere the software automatically creates it all around or even for the for the doors and windows and all the lengths are mm -hmm. uh, appearing there and this these are all dynamically linked that means when you change the drawing uh, the dimension will also change ah, okay so these are not just plain numbers they are no, in no. connection with the model no yeah the, these are in connection with the data and then when uh, you would like to measure it anything like for example only this this room width here then you can just pick two points and then set mm -hmm. it up uh, over there talking about rooms uh, you can use the uh, building and room and area tool which is again do? having a, a, a default setting when you can just you know go around and click into the rooms and then later rename them but the software actually automatically recognizes the shapes uh, I mean the, the the contours of these rooms and it calculates the real uh, size of mm -hmm. that roof uh, and it prints it on screen this is something that you can customize and you can later uh, of course print it into a PDF file, for example. What happens if a room has a split uh, roles? Maybe half of it is, is a kitchen, the other way, other half is, is the diner part. So how do we, because I see that this tool is recognizing the room contours. Yes, but that's In right. this case, that's not going to help us because you want to manually define the part of the room which is going to be one yep. location and the other one is going to be another one. So how do we do that? In a situation like that, or if it's a terrace, because in, a, a terrace is not fully surrounded with that walls as right. well, you will go with the room by polygon. In that case, you just, just go around and trace that uh, room and say, okay, this is the terrace counter and I would like to place the, the text. Yeah, that will be the height, that's fine. And I just click here and mm -hmm. I just rename it. This is not a room, this is a terrace. And yeah, that's fine. And the same way you can just go around and, and rename all the rooms mm -hmm. to the way you want. And uh, that is how it will be printed. You think it's time to create some sections maybe? Yeah, a section is something that you can find 
uh, easily in the documentation. This is the section. Also, if you are an interior designer, you will probably go with wall elevations as well. So there, there are many different options here. We will, we will focus on the architectural part now and we will say, okay, now I will just go with the default settings. I don't, I don't mind whether these are set uh, uh, visible or not visible. I just go whatever uh, the software gives, uh, throws at me and I will just hide the objects. I don't, in, this is an architectural uh, uh, drawing so I don't want to see the, 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 the chairs and the furniture inside uh, the section so I just disable that and uh, this is how it goes I will I think create a section around some place here of this building uh, later I can change its path mm -hmm. or, its, or its location how do we know from which direction we are oh yeah so yeah okay. yeah so this way when you when you have designed this you can also create a broken um, section with with a, with a broken line uh, so when you set up this uh, view direction, that will be uh, the way you look at this section. And then the software ge generates, this is a dynamic section that means it, it reflects the changes while you're working on the project. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, the connections are there automatically. I, uh, there's, a, there's still a few refinements that I need to do, perhaps adding a few more layers to the uh, to the slabs and so yes, on, but it, basically this is how it goes. Because of the underfloor heating, this, is, uh, this yes. hasn't been done before. Uh, but if you, if you zoom in on the connection, on the detail of, of yep. how the slab <laughs> meets the wall, you see exactly what you were talking about yep. earlier, about the connection of the layers, that beautifully visible over here. So uh, the next topic is, is how do we get something similar uh, elevations? So yep. I think they are, they are made the same way, maybe? Yep. Uh, pretty similar. Uh, at the right hand side, we did not discuss that yet, but at the right hand side, there is a project navigator which allows you to navigate between floors mm -hmm. as well. Uh, but it allows you to also create a south elevation. For example, when you click on it and it's and it's not existing yet, the software will automatically generate that. At any time, you can convert these into 2D drawings. You can send it over to your to your uh, clients published into a PDF, which we will cover soon. And then also you can communicate with your uh, with your colleagues uh, if they are working with another software and they need a DWG file, you can export this into a mm -hmm. DWG file. But generally speaking, uh, what we have here in, in, in it, these are all in one single file, in one single project. So you don't have to worry about where you store those files. If you save your project itself, then everything is inside one single mm -hmm. file. Now let's put all these drawings into into a plot layout because we are going to end up end up with a lot of drawings and we want to yep. organize them somehow. So yep. uh, I'm I'm sure you have realized that up until this point we have been working in in one to one scale. So we we created everything in the same scale as it actually exists. But how yep. do we scale them up or down? Okay, so what what we have here is 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 the building itself. We used it partially for documentation, but it is a building. It is not a paper that we can print. So for the paper, uh, we need to. Uh, prepare a layout, a plot layout, we call that. And then for the plot layout, you need to set up the paper size. I will go with ISO sizes, but as you can see, uh, any sort of other size you can set up and even custom sizes are supported. Mm -hmm. And you can go with uh, several different settings for the portrait or landscape. And even you can also add your title box if you uh, have any. Uh, I will just go with the default now. You can create your own title box. We have a tutorial mm -hmm. about that. And I just go with this one and I say, okay, I would like to prepare this layout and I would like to uh, fill this up with the, sorry, it appears on the other screen, with the information that appears here. For example, uh, the designer is me and uh, for example, the, the, the company I'm working for is Catline uh, and so on. So you can fill this up yep. and when you say okay, then the software fills that information into this uh, title mm -hmm. box easily. So how now, do we get drawings onto this layout in a scaled down version? Yeah, in that case, uh, when it appears in front of you, you need to find the proper drawing. Now in this case, this will be the second floor. Mm -hmm. So I just click and drag and release the mouse and I select the scaling. I will go with 1 to 100. And if that fits, I'm fine, it's, it's okay. If, if it's not, then uh, I can rescale it. At any time, if I click on it, I can change what I see. I can, uh, you know, uh, kind of um, make, make a crop version of this one, like only the half mm -hmm. I would like to see. And also I can go at any time into the settings and saying that, okay, what I see here is not, not, not correct because I would like to change its scaling to from 1 to 100, for example, to 1 to 50. 
And then the software re rescales that, I can just uh, move it, realign it on the content, and so on. I can just uh, find the best uh, solution, perhaps placing a few rendered images here or a section uh, here on the right hand side uh, and so on. If it's a larger paper, I have even more uh, options to do that. We actually did that before. Yeah. Uh, so we have a larger version, it's, it, is a, it is on a rather large page. We already created a PDF file, but first, before I show you the final result, I would like to show you how to, how to uh, uh, plot this into a PDF file, mm -hmm. how to prepare a PDF file. So when you see the content that you would like to print, you go to the print to PDF option, you name the file where you would like to place it, you set up the paper size uh, and, the, and the orientation, and also you can set up the scale factor, which is in this case, it, it will be one to uh, one. Yeah, you don't have to scale it down any further because it's already scaled. So. Yeah, and in this case, I would like to print the entire drawing and the entire content that what I have here. So this is what I will go with. Uh, and this is, yeah, uh, let's just You're center that. It. Yeah, sorry, uh, I just made a mistake here. Mm -hmm. This is landscape and let's just recenter it again. And this is the content that I would like to publish when I click on print this is in this case it is actually publishing a pdf file mm -hmm. the same dialog applies for printing uh, literally to a printer and publishing pdf files in several formats so this is the way we have created this final version which is having a, uh, quite a few more uh, visual information but those are only objects that we actually downloaded from 3d mm -hmm. warehouse or we used from the uh, the built-in libraries of the software we use these um, this room and shape. I, I um, think uh, some of them are actually blocks brought yes. uh, in from another CAD software. So. Yes, yes, you can also use that. Uh, we, we created a few sections that you can see the uh, section lines clearly. We used um, those room and area tools and these here uh, are also objects and this is what we call a block uh, mm -hmm. here. Uh, this is In the software we actually call this these groups, 2D groups that you can uh, use as stamps that you can place on a drawing. So what happens if you want to create uh, some kind of lists or schedules <coughs> from this drawing? Yeah, okay, so we have this final version that we have started with. This mm -hmm. is where we would like to uh, uh, head to at the end of our design. And here we already have the full drawing with the full, uh, everything around uh, all the Mm -hmm. all the different levels and everything here. That's actually what we see. used for the plot layout, what you just saw. So yeah. what if I want to collect all the rooms into a nice table text? Yeah, you have a few options. One of these options are the, the schedules that you can just go mm -hmm. and either you can define your own schedules or you can go with the, 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 the factor default ones. I will just go with the default one now. And I would like to extract data of all my rooms uh, but without the floor information in this case, I will just keep, I try to keep it as simple as possible. Now I, I don't want to confuse everyone. So I just go with, uh, with the room name uh, and, and for example, the area, that's all, that's, that's, that's all I want to list. Well, a large list for this, uh, like, a, like a room legend for this, uh, this one level. And then when I hit OK, I just would like to extract this information of one floor. But if I want to, I can extract all the, all the floors and say, OK. Let's just place it here uh, around and this is what I would like to see. So now I have a nice summary at the right, right hand side, kind of a, a legend of my all of my rooms here uh, in this, um, on this drawing. Uh, and the same thing I can do uh, with many, many other things. You can go and find all these sort of door, mm -hmm. window, schedules, uh, slabs, and so on, even with the layers and, and so on. I see an icon that you probably connect to uh, Microsoft Excel. Yes, that's right. Uh, here you can find the quantity takeoff. This is also, you can also create R RTF list for Word, uh, or you can create Excel list, uh, and you can go with any sort of, even you can extract the tiling information. The software is able to literally tile mm -hmm. the surfaces and then calculate the amount of tiles and so on terrains and in case of the building calculation you can also create a, a large uh, Excel file with all the beams columns and and architectural uh, information uh, extracted like length surface sizes and so on yes and make calculations with those we promise that we are going to take this show from the from the beginning from the first lines all the way to visualization now we did uh, show you some rendered images but that's not where we are stopping here. Uh, instead, we are going to talk about another product that we have, which is Arch and XP Live. And that is all, the, all about visualization. Yeah, so have a look at that. So what we are seeing on the screen right now is a finalized virtual walkthrough of the building that we just created. And that was apparently made with Arch and XP Live. But what is actually live? 
Live is a th uh, third software, the separately installed software for visualization, real-time visualization. So what you see on screen was kind of real-time recorded. You don't have, mm -hmm. an, you didn't have to wait for long rendering shots and so on. So we will load the model now into, yes. into Live, which was the original BIM model in ArchLine. Mm -hmm. And then this is what you get at the at the first shot is is actually the building the the, the things that you have modeled in in Archline the design software, mm -hmm. all the walls, uh, the building structure, roofs and so on, and also the sun settings are coming from. As you can see, the the sun is actually moving in uh, in in live. That's right. You can set up a different time, a different uh, date, but the location is the one that you have set up. Yeah, in. we we did set up the geolocation. That's <laughs> yes. where this information is coming from, right? Yes, that's right. So, so and also the materials, the the the, the different shots, the views, the three D perspectives mm -hmm. are coming from uh, the previous software, and that those are actually not only perspective views those are also images that you can just send away uh, to your clients right away it's you didn't have to wait uh, a second to create those images those are automatically created there at the, at the tray of uh, live as you can see so there was no rendering time whatsoever. no rendering time uh, and also uh, if you would like to fine-tune something as you can see all the materials are coming from our line uh, pretty fine material sets you can just select from and then you can just uh, change this material to wall surface, plastic surface, or anything else, and you can even change the brightness, and you can see the change appearing in instantly all around in your model. Yes. So this is how you change the materials, uh, modify the materials, you can even create materials, and you can work with the, with the high fidelity materials of the software itself, because the live software is shipped with a built-in library of materials, and uh, also objects, we will mm -hmm. also uh, work with those. Now, what I'm doing is, I'm actually, pulling in those materials, applying them to the surfaces, and they, they are changed wherever else they, they uh, are in this model. So I actually kind of test uh, what is the best uh, mm -hmm. for this solution. And once I find that, I can just go into another library, finding f perhaps some environment material like asphalt, grass surface, and so on. And then mm -hmm. I can just you click just and drag. drag. And drop. Oh, yes, okay. let's just try a darker tone. If I don't like that, I can just go back to the previous version. You can under redo things just as you would do in any other software. And uh, I will also change this pavement. Uh, as you can see, there are other libraries for uh, internal flooring as well. Even the, you can even see the scratches on the, on the on the flooring on those materials. Also, the metal surfaces you can apply onto different uh, areas of your design. And there is one library which is called the Stone Flooring, and that contains a few um, stone surfaces for flooring, or even you can apply them onto wall surfaces. And let's just apply this here because this actually highlights how detailed oh, these materials rustic. are. It is really it's really popping up. It's really looks it really looks like it's it's three D. Mm -hmm. And this is a uh, this is a very good quality material, and and all of those are are part of the built-in library. So you don't have to manually download this. No, it, no. it comes with the uh, with the factory. Yeah, installer. so you can, and you can extend the libraries with your own materials, mm -hmm. of course. But these are all built in, and you can just start working with those. Uh, and also the same uh, applies for three D assets, objects, and uh, and decorative items, external or internal uh, items like this car here. You can see that you can move it, you can rotate it. Uh, it's a very high detailed object with all the beautiful reflections around on the surfaces. Uh, even there's the steering wheel inside, so it's it's mm. a very very detailed one. But it you can uh, work very fast in this software because this is tailored for working with a large amount of surfaces and high high detailed uh, materials, which you would otherwise kind to kind of try to avoid when you design uh, the the building in the design software when you make the documentation because those are a lot of polygons. Yes, it would take a lot of time to render these <coughs> things, but apparently here there's no rendering time. But, so. but here it, it's not a problem. You can uh, just click and drag uh, and, and bring in uh, detailed uh, plants and decorative items. Uh, even the, you can kind of build a hedge here. You can just uh, rotate it the way you want. You can move it around. You can scale it even if you want. And as you can see, it's slightly blown by the wind. Oh yes, it, there's, there's movement <coughs> everywhere. Yes, yes. So um, those are actually uh, living with the scene. And you can just control uh, copy and control play, paste them anywhere. So mm -hmm. to, you can actually have a large amount of uh, those all around. I also try to find something which is a fireplace itself. So you can just use that search field if you know that you would like to find something that's part of mm -hmm. the library. And if you just uh, search for fire, that is coming up something that we call effects in the software. 
It's like those dynamic. Are, yes, yes, uh, dynamic content, which uh, this fire is li really burning the wood over there, as you can see. I so see. It, it's really um, having a nice living effect uh, here. And you can apply, if, it's, if, it, if this would be an interior, you can use it for internal mm -hmm. uh, fireplaces or even candle lights you can apply. What else can you add? Uh, there you can see there are larger trees and bushes and other uh, decorative mm -hmm. plants that you can use on the street or in inside the garden. Uh, either it should it be a sakura tree or or an acacia or something like that. You mm -hmm. can just uh, you know pop it in and then you can just uh, mm -hmm. replace it. You can even resize it. And as you can see, these are all living, blown by the wind as well. And uh, well, this way you can actually add a little bit more. And as you see on the right hand side in the library, there are tiny uh, human figures next to those uh, for thumbnails. The scale, so you that's, understand yeah. how big things are. That's for the scale. Uh, now question, how do you <clears throat> place multiple trees at once? Because it might be a little bit cumbersome to paint the surfaces with, with vegetation. So yes. what, what can you do? Yes, uh, well, you can actually select multiple uh, trees and control copy and paste them. Uh, but there is an even better tool, which is called the foliage tool. That's, that's what I'm using now. And uh, the foliage tool has some brushes and palettes that you can actually customize on your own. Uh, I have two uh, default trees in, on the palette. So what I, when I click and drag the, the, the brush, it, I can actually paint the surface with trees, which is a beautiful way of populating the surrounding mm. with large uh, amount of detailed foliage. And that brings a, a lot of detail into the, into the design. This is actually what we are doing now. We are, we are trying to fill it up with life and, and details because that makes it uh, living. And just, as you can see, you can, uh, you can just do it in seconds. It really uh, does not take a long time. Makes things much, much more interesting. So what is the, what is the output format? What, what are we working towards? Well, uh, first things first, we we are having images just as you saw mm -hmm. before. We will uh, create uh, a yes. video file as well. Also, you can import content into the library. This is what you can see on the on the right hand side, which you can import uh, FBX or OBJ files. You can directly import into the software, or when you uh, work together with the design software, then you can just directly uh, import uh, objects from the design software as well. It's not a necessary uh, thing to do, but you can also do that because Live is also a standalone software, so you don't need to have the design software to mm -hmm. be able to work with that. Uh, there are also surroundings that we have downloaded and imported, and this is how we got to this uh, this stage, where you have all the uh, motorbikes, uh, all the surrounding nicely painted, and all the street lights as well. So now we have updated the, the images themselves. Those are the latest uh, snapshots that we have created in a second. And these are the images that we are uh, about to send to the client. In a, so this is really uh, instant. And now also we have uh, discussed the sunlight, but we didn't mm -hmm. talk about the artificial lights like a street light or a, yes. or a light inside the, the, the building or a lamp. Uh, that is something that you can manage here. As you can see, once you switch to the light mode, you will see those nice tiny uh, light bulbs. Mm -hmm. So you can turn them on. You can manage uh, manage them. You can turn them uh, uh, on or off, and even you can change their uh, intensity. You can change their color. Uh, if you would like to, you can uh, select a color from a, a color palette from like uh, NCS or or Ariel yes. or something like that, or you can just even uh, mix your own color. And then also you can change how it uh, it, it it interacts with the world. Like this is a half a light or a uh, a real light, so this is this is really something that you can uh, change. Mm -hmm. So once you have set up the lights, I think the last thing to do is to get to the exports. We already created a few images, but uh, how do you capture <coughs> the movement of this model? Yes, uh, well, let's have an animation. Now for this animation, uh, you can go to the animation palette. By the way, there is also uh, an output for Panoramic 360. Uh, so now we have two animations coming from the design software. Uh, which we can just uh, play and see whether we like the result or not. If we like it, we can record it, mm -hmm. save it into an AVI file, which then we can later upload to YouTube or Facebook. Or we can edit this content. And even better, we can also create our, our own additional nice. animations. So perhaps, like for example, I would like to turn around and go to those rocks over there. And from mm -hmm. that rocks, uh, I would like to approach this building in a nice closing shot. So what I do, I just first I move there. There's a special tool for, tool for that uh, to click and move over there. And then I turn around. So this will be the first frame. 
and then I and I click here and I, I, I create the new animation. Now, when I create the new animation, I have the first frame. All I need to do is to find the, the, the final shot where I would like to get to. Uh, so this should be somewhere around here. And then now I can add this frame as an additional frame to the existing mm -hmm. one. And uh, I can also change the, the length of it. Uh, I think six seconds would be okay. So let's just go back to the beginning. Let's have a preview. Yes, if I like it. I think I think this is quite I good. I think this would do. So it's, it's very easy, extremely easy to create an animation. And then I can just save it. If I like it, I can click on this little uh, icon to save it as an AVI. And just we, we just did this uh, before with the, with the other one, uh, with the first uh, shot. So let's just play uh, what the uh, result looks like. Looks very good. Looks like our work is done. So in a, in a very short time, <laughs> we managed to create the building that you see over there. And yeah. we dressed it up in Ocean XP Live. I understand that as a as a closing remark, we have a few uh, user-made uh, models that we can we can show you. Uh, we have mentioned that Live is a new product, but we already have great and beautiful projects being realized with it. Let's see the first example. I think this is a residential uh, area, yeah. and that was made with Ocean XP <coughs> Live as well. And this is not even just one single building with mm -hmm. its surrounding, but you will see this is a large. It's a long yes. street of uh, separate, detailed, and nice uh, buildings. With, Vegetation uh, does wonders with yeah. the end result, I, I can say that. That's right, and as you can see, all the fences are, are created, and uh, this is only not for just architecture, but also for interior design, which yes. you will see later. Perfect. So let's just uh, look at the videos until the, the questions from the viewers come in, and at the end, we are going to answer them as well. Let's just admire these things. Uh, that's basically what we wanted to uh, cover today uh, regarding the Ocean XP product line. We talked about the uh, the design part and we took all the way to visualization and we just finished with one hour and 30 seconds. So yeah. uh, we would like to thank uh, to Barbara for inviting us. Uh, we had a very lovely time showing you what our software is capable of. Should you have any questions, you can ask them now or you can get in touch with the knowledge guys and then you can direct the questions to, to us. So uh, Barbara, again, thank you. thank you very much for inviting us yeah. and for the attendees, thank you as well for sticking around and discovering what Ashan is capable of. Thank, thank you, you guys. Much. That was great. I didn't want to interrupt you with question because we, you guys were on a roll. But I start from the, 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 the question at the end. Is live based on a game engine like Twinmotion or Lumion? Yes, live is based on uh, the Epic Games Unreal Engine. That is fantastic news because, as you know, you know we have a lot of uh, Twin Motion customers that are now um, would like something like that. But that if they have it connected already to a modern software, that that's great news. I think uh, we're gonna spread the word. Please do. And um, the other question is: Could I exchange add-in models with those tools? Uh, you mean uh, models created in Archline imported into Twinmotion? Um, or others? I, uh, let me let me ask uh, Axel who po who posted the question. So yeah, uh, yes. yes, that was yes, correct. Yeah, well, the point is uh, with the models that, uh, as you saw the chart at the very beginning of our presentation, I I think my colleague is trying to find that now. Uh, this is the way Archline communicates with its surrounding. It is very, very communicative. We are very proud of that, and we are keep trying to expand this this world uh, connection with, uh, around us. So, if you are working with an with a BIM uh, with another uh, BIM um, professional, you can use the IFC. You can uh, work with AutoCAD files. You can use uh, Revit files, and this is just uh, just the architectural part. As you can see, Archline also supports reads and writes. Uh, other sort of uh, model files like SketchUp, mm -hmm. 3D Studio, and so on. So, uh, if that was the question, I think this is the best. Uh, one that. thing I would like to interject here is that this goes uh, also for Arch and XP Live. It's able to import models not only from Archline but from other parts yes. as well, provided that they are made in what kind of file formats? Uh, it, those are FBX and OBJ. So uh, now um, Live and Archline, uh, they they live together in this project that we have uh, shown. But you can install Live separately without having Archline, the design software, yes. and you can use uh, use it for 
with together with other uh, software as well, uh, it, being able to export FBX files and OBJ files. That is fantastic. I'm sure a lot of uh, our customer will be glad to to know about live. And um, uh, yes, and Excel is also asking us. So that includes the built-in model libraries, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, cool. Live is coming with its own built-in library, which okay. you can freely extend, either from ArchLine, directly passing the models, or using the import option uh, from the from the menu, which we showed before. Uh, you just go there, import, you can scale it, and then you can just save it into the library. Actually, we are encouraging our customers to use external sources, because what we can ship with the, with the software can get, uh, you know, obsolete especially if we if we are talking about manufacturer items so we always encourage the customers to reach out for external sources and use models from there yes yeah, so live is coming with a very good quality high quality material and object library but the point is that the, the user should be able to uh to extend the libraries the way yes. they work excellent excellent and as you said so you can import pdf pdf files as well um into so ArchLine, into yes. ArchLine, you can you can uh, import okay. images, PDFs, line work in DXF or DWG, uh, BIM file formats such as IFC or even RVT, yep. RFA files. So the point is to keep it as open for the receiving and the sending side as as possible. So it doesn't matter if your your uh, clients or peers or partners or or colleagues are even working on a different software product, you should be able to use what they are creating. And for future references, uh, when someone is using ArchLine and keep, uh, keeps updating it uh, to newer versions, new versions are always being able to communicate with older versions and old versions are oh, always yes. being able to communicate with future versions. This is intentional from our side because we want to make the users being able to uh, communicate with, mm -hmm. within the, uh, the ecosystem of ArchLine yes. as, as fluent as possible. So we try to be backwards compatible because it, it yeah. might happen that in one company, uh, one, one uh, user uses this year's version, but a colleague of his is using an older version. So yeah. it should be able to, to pass the information from one workstation to the other. That is perfect. That's all we need to know. That's great. Well, thank you so much, guys. This was uh, fantastic. Uh, you yourselves have answered a lot of questions that were popping into my mind, and I'm sure other um, other people that were following us. So I I'm going to take the screen back just yes. to show everybody where they can find ArchLine XD uh, on the Novage, uh catalog. And I would encourage everyone to stay tuned, follow us on social media, we're everywhere for a coming promotion. And especially, I don't want to give it away, but stay tuned and uh, stay in touch. And next week, we'll make an announcement uh, about ArchLine. And I can't say anything. And again, we are very happy for the invitation. So thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, we see each other soon with another uh, presentation. We have to come up with another, uh, even more spectacular topic, which would be difficult, but we can do it. Fantastic. Yes. Perfect. Count us in. We'll, we'll be very happy to host you. And uh, as you know, Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster service, and most importantly, no headaches. Check us out at Novage.com and um, yeah, give us a call. We're always on the phone uh, waiting for to answer your question. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great rest of the day or night. Thank you for the attention. Bye-bye. Goodbye. -bye.